up, y'all? It's another episode of Explicit Content. I got my boy Keith Clark, Julian Hemmings here. Two personal good friends. How y'all feeling today? Great, bro. What you got for today? Shit, man. Just getting some last minute work done for the week. Yeah, I feel real good today. Um, we're meeting with some organizations to see we can, how we can make an impact in Atlanta, so it's been pretty cool. All right, so I know, uh, Julian, you, you have brought a, a couple presidential candidates to Morehouse. Yeah. Um, on a more personal level, you want to talk about that? Or yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the presidential election so far? So, um, I, think, I think the difference between this election as compared to the 2016 election is that, you know, people recognize the fact that their voices really matter. Uh, I think people thought that, you know, there was no way a guy like Trump could win office because the establishment could really build up uh, a guard around the White House. But they realized that if we're not going out there and voting, we can have a racist in the White House and then we can't even speak to or, or work with. Um, so, we, so for bringing candidates here, I thought that what can really get young people energized and mobilized around voting would be to demystify the political process. And the way you demystify something is by making it real. The way you make something real, especially with candidates, is that you bring them to the school and hear about you know, HBCU uh, concerns. So we brought uh, Kamala Harris to Morehouse, uh, Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg with about a nine person team with no money. Uh, we brought about $6,000 worth of revenue to the college. But it happened due to like consistency, hard work, and I really dream big of what we can do. So out of the three candidates, or even if one of three wasn't mentioned, who do you feel would be best um, in the presidential election right now, if you have that? I think, I think, so I can't necessarily say who's the best because of many candidates over, right. so I can't give an automatic endorsement. But what I can say is, from the temperature of what I'm seeing, um, I think Bernie Sanders has a really strong chance of winning. Uh, primarily because we brought, we brought uh, other candidates, and they had about probably 200, 300 people in the room. But when we brought Bernie out to a rally, there was a rally of about 4,000 people on top of the 2,000 yeah, students at Morehouse. So there's about 6,000 folks out there. So who do you think, Keith? Four. Who do you think? Oh, as far as Democrats, uh, if you got other. Yeah, uh, for, for Democrats, definitely, I believe it's going to be a, this is my prediction, I believe it's going to be a Bernie Sanders, Stacey Abrams ticket. Okay, so and then, um, even if yeah. you feel, or, so if you feel like Bernie Sanders and Stacey Abrams will be on the ticket, how do you feel about that ticket against Trump? I think it's horrible. They're going to lose. Yeah, I think they're gonna lose. They're probably it's probably gonna be uh, they're gonna get the the Democratic states, um, but when it comes for overall America, um, you know, Bert, uh Stacey didn't didn't win even here in Georgia. Um, she has more of a federal backing now. She has way more powerful backing than what she did have a year ago. Um, but as for um, Bernie, uh, the Democrats are divided. That's how I see it. Um, they're not as united as the Republicans right now. They were during the Obama uh, election, uh, President Obama election, but they're, they're just too divided. You can even see it in the debates. So even to, to the fact to get them, we're almost at November, basically. I mean, from political way, November is not like a, a, a far way away, right? So pretty soon it's going to be November. And let's be honest, the the... The Democrats are not going to have it together in, in like eight months. You know, it's just not going to, it's not going to um, be there. So but how, um, how do you think, um, if, so you're, you're uh, predicting the Trump win again. How do you yeah. think the next four years of Trump will be? Well, I mean, I think, I think there's definitely things that need to be improved upon. Uh, I think he's done amazing so far. Uh, now, a lot of people don't like his antics and some of the things he's said. Uh, he rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but I think that was a part of his strategy to even get where he is. You got to understand he's the least qualified president in history, which is not a good thing. But um, but to, to do a prediction on the next four years, I think it, it's going to be better. I mean, the economy is amazing right now. No one in the world can deny that, even the Democrats. They can't. So it's just I think it's going to be another good four years. But um, like I said, he is not a member of the establishment. So that is a problem on both sides, Republican and Democrat. That is a problem. Um, but until we see a Republican leader, there's no true leadership in the Republicans, to be completely honest. There's no true leadership. Uh, but I think he'll have to do for now. So, and Julian, you're on your side, what is the next four years look like for the Democratic Party? Yeah, so um, I, I don't think Stacey Harris would be Bernie Sanders' pick for VP. Um, I think Bernie Sanders is going to go with a really you know, core progressive or someone that is a progressive but has sort of like modern tendencies similar to Elizabeth Warren. And I think actually when it comes to independent states, Senator Sanders can do pretty well. Or just 
you have a moderate game, I think they can, you know, take it over. But I, I think the reason why you would have someone like a Sanders or a Sanders-like candidate that would win is because people in this country tend to be for, if you're looking at the numbers for Medicare for All, uh, for finding a solution to student loan debt, uh, to finding a solution uh, to getting us out of all these, I don't want to say insane, but these, these, really, these really bad wars where we're sending young people out there and who are serving their country, but they're coming back home with missing limbs or if they're coming back home with everything intact physically, uh, mentally, we have no services for them to help them overcome things like PTSD. Uh, but I, I agree with Keith on what he's saying when it comes to uh, Democrats' division. The Democrats, the Democratic establishment has been bought and paid for by corporations, but it's a Republican establishment. Right. And we have a lot of people who have concerns about how will my voice matter? How can I get engaged? And I think with Senator Sanders' stance on refusing big corporate money, not going into wine caves, that's what makes an individual stand out. So, um, you know, like you said, we, I, I believe the Democratic yeah. so Party is divided. Okay, go ahead. I was, one more thing. So the, the future of the Democratic Party will look more like Ilhan Omar, AOC. It's going to be a progressive okay. movement that's against corporate PAC money. Okay. okay. So um, with the Democratic Party being such divided, and you see, it's, like he said, it's getting to November. We don't know who will push for a president. Where do you think that the black people vote or the, the black vote really matters in a divided party like this? I never tell people how to vote. Um, that's just a personal stance that I have. Like that's me and Keith, we get along real well because I don't ever say, "Hey, man, you should vote for Trump." That's up to you. I think you showing your voice as a person, as a person of color, especially whoever you vote for. I just want people to get involved and to be in the conversation. But I think as Black people, we should look at who has our best economic interests at heart, um, who can speak on with with dignity, pride and honesty, the, the systematic um, degradation of a people, black people in America, and, and who can grow. Because every single person on that Democratic stage, and the Republican, Trump, has a massive race problem. Who can speak about race honestly, and who, can, and who, can, who wants to genuinely address these issues? That's what I'm thinking. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, less on the politics side, I know yeah. that's both of you guys are now, but... I'd like to rebuttal that. that. Okay. I'd like, that. yeah, okay. yeah. I agree with Mencio what, what Julian said. There were two points in there I didn't uh, agree with. So Donald Trump has 50% of the independent vote right now, of all of America, okay? Uh, what, what poll? What poll? Yeah, what Gallup. poll? Gallup. Trump is not at 51%. I said Trump has 50%. Of independent voters, right? Well, he doesn't. Well, you can you can you fact can check that. You can you can fact check that up. But the second thing I didn't agree with is the fact that that Trump is passing racist policies. Um, don't feel that way. You know, there. Here's my argument for this. Uh, I always said if Trump's a racist, he's the greatest racist of all time, because uh, there's been seven presidents in, out of the 45 that actually gave the HBCUs. And I gotta be honest about where I stand on the issue. I can't care about everything. I'm one of those people that have to be really focused about where I put my attention politically. So issues that I care about, suicides, black education, gun violence. I'm suicide, no love. Yeah, gun, gun, gun violence, black education, suicides. Those are the three main things that I'm concerned with as an individual and as a voter. And like, like you said, there hasn't been a new gun law regulation since last February, right? So a, a lot of people are arguing about, I know we're kind of getting off topic there, but a lot of people are arguing about how there needs to be a background check on private sales. You know, he, that's neither here nor there. But to say that Trump is truly racist, I've met the guy. You can't control a background check on private sales. It's a private sale. For it's a private sale. Well, I'm saying there's some people that yeah, believe that's, that. That's, that's, that's why I'm saying it. I, I believe it's. It's a private cell, right? So you can't do a background check. I agree with that, but there are some people that don't agree with that. So, um, so yeah, I'm just getting uh, on the Gallup report that Trump has a 49 percent approval rating. Okay, I can't and, really and that's exactly that. what I said. No. 49, 50 approval rating. That's a approval. Approval. Rating. That's, that's, approval, approval, approval. Not that's, approval. that's not. That's not what I asked for. Yeah, that's, okay. not, that's not what you asked for. That's not what I, I said. He has. He has 50 percent approval rating with independence. He's going to get 50 percent of the independent vote. Okay. 
We can wait till November. We can hash it out in November. Trump does not have 51 percent approval. I, I never said 51. I said 50. We found that he had a 49 percent approval rating from as a president, but not yeah. from well, independence. From from independence. That was from the president. The, it, it was no. It was no rating on independence. Okay. Okay. So it's okay. Keith. Okay. Well, we, what, what, hey, at the end of the day, okay. when the election is here in November, you can play this back, and we can see what percent of the independent vote he had. We can do it, or we can look at 2016 election, which would be outside of the argument. But he was going against a historically weak candidate, Hillary Clinton. Is, is Hillary Clinton is not a historically weak candidate. Okay. Whatever. On a pair, on a presidential stage, yes. Yeah. But as a candidate, no. Yeah, I mean, she is because Hillary Clinton was known to give speeches to massive banks in Wall Street. Right. She was, and my mom, I always tell you this before, my mom's on during. Right. Uh, as Secretary of State, she put a dummy president in, basically collapsed on during government. Right. Senator still for $20. Um, and, and then the Democrats worked against Senator Sanders and basically sold the election from him. Yeah. When, you know, so, yeah. so she, was, she was weak. Okay. You know? Okay, I see that. So, I see that. Yeah. Um, like I said, that's the politics. You can spend the most stuff on that, but I just want to kind of talk about your background before Morehouse. Um, I know Keith Clark, you were from Florida City. Right. It was way more interesting. Yeah. Well, you were, well, you were, you were working uh, on Al Sharpton. Pretty interesting. You were working on Al Sharpton. So, yeah, we want to hear about that. You were just a rapper from Florida City. I wasn't. I wasn't just a rapper. I wasn't just can a rapper. You, can you tell me yeah. fake? Can you tell me the best thing? What the fuck? Did <laughs> 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 you hear that? No, I can't believe he said that to you. I can't. But C. Rob is C. Rob's a DJ. But so you guys are like like Shit. link up. I'm not a rapper. I'm not a fucking rapper. But so not a rapper. So can't, why can't get bitches just sing? It was one of the singles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You how many songs you completed? 40, 49. <laughs> to the day. Forty nine songs. Yeah. Forty nine songs. Written, I've written fifty. Yeah. How long has your career been? How long have you had a career like in rap? Like, like since two thousand from two thousand eight till about two thousand and fourteen. You produced mm-hmm. more songs than Jay Electronica. That's deep. no, I haven't. Jay Electronica like, has like a hundred, two hundred oh, songs. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. So, so what what inspires you to write your music? Like, what's that thing? I do one song a year. It's just like a hobby, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's just like I have forty nine songs, but you're not forty nine. I do one song a year. I used to do. I, I used to do. I used to, <laughs> okay, that, that, that was funny. I was trying not to. Lie. That was funny. He, he hit me. He tried it. 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 No, but uh, uh, I used to do eight songs a year, but now I I limit it down to one. He told me about it yeah. before. No, seriously. Yeah. I know you, we had this conversation before off yeah. and, and that's why I wanted to bring you on. So I wasn't just a rapper from Florida City. That's I mean, I like crazy. Song, like, I still yeah, so. like that was a that was a really like interesting. That was my last single. That was your that was your farewell. Are you gonna? Go is back? that is that funny? No, I was no 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 no. no. <laughs> I do one song a year. It's not like I'm a rapper. It's just like, gotcha. it's like so. Like, where do you want to get with yeah. the rap? Rapping is nowhere music. really. I think they're all crooked and it's the music industry is evil. It's satanic and you know I'm all set. You know. Okay, gotcha. You so, know, I think it's cool. Um, I like XO Records. They're pretty cool. But uh, even they, they can just kick rocks, really, okay. you know? I don't, I don't understand what's happening. No, but... Uh, what does that mean? I don't, yeah. He asked me, I'm where just, did I want to take the music? So, I want to take it to my basement. <laughs> like, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's, that's the honest answer. I want to take it to my basement oh my and, and share it with my friends as a joke. All right? And that's how I heard why I could hear it. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I that, the way I, I wanted it heard. I, you know? I know what I heard. I was impressed by your lyricism. Okay. Even though, even though it was like and I've been writing lyrics since 2001. I've been recording music since 2008. So I started writing lyrics when the Xbox first came out. But I started recording in 2008. And I recorded from 2008 until like 2000. I recorded. I, start, I stopped recording heavily in 2014. But um, what's, your I, rap, I think, what's your rap name? It's Keith Clark. Wow, it's like Kendrick Lamar. Or Kanye West. Wow. Yeah. Damn. All right. Uh, so, yeah. so uh, back in Bronx, you worked with Al Sharpton. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So um, when I was 16, I worked for um, like different civil rights activists that I admired when I was a little kid. I was a, I was a weird kid. Like I loved, I loved Harry Potter and, and, and politics. And you know, I was in the Bronx, getting running down from bullies. But um, but yeah. So I, I worked with Reverend Al Sharpton. I worked with the mother of uh, uh, mother and wife of Eric Gardner. I met with uh, Michael Brown's mother, Sherry Martin's mother, and I was doing a lot of community activism work. I really cared. I don't, I don't know what it was, but when I would see images on TV about people being bullied, belittled, bullied, disrespected, 
it, it really bothered me. Um, so when I chose to come to Morehouse, I wanted to continue that mission. And I, I worked at the United Nations, and I built my own two organizations. But it's just on the base of the fact that I really, really care. You said you built two organizations. Yes. You want to, what two organizations uh, you built? So, yeah, so in a year, I built, uh, I built New Deal Democrats, year and a half, New Deal Democrats and Dream Big Initiative. New Deal Democrats, within a year and a half, we brought four candidates. As I said, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, Bryce Hannes, Pete Buttigieg. Um, and we registered 200 people vote in the AUC. We've got 200 people in the Western community. And um, me and my team talk classes every Tuesday and Thursday on policy issues at Sale Hall in 107. And then the Dream Big Initiative, um, that's mostly like our volunteer service place okay. where we kind of- So it's like a plans. second side to- Yeah. Okay. And we were told, we and you were, we were trying to work on this, right. this, this, this case. Yeah, yeah, I know you've been talking about Dream Big for a while. Um, and yeah. then the Black Panther case, that'll be, you know, brought to yeah. me in but, other ways. But, but yeah. you know, DJ C up here, great with the camera, so that boy's scared. And then you got this, you got Keith Clark with that white crackhead bitch. I don't know what's gonna. Can we, can we, can we talk <laughs> about like how I'm not a rapper, like at all, <laughs> like, all right. like before? Are we talking about like before Morehouse? I thought that's what the so the, the oh, was yeah. on. Like, but you, but your career has continued. But yeah, so um, it I'll, hasn't. I'll, I'll, I'll you said you're doing one song a year. I do one song a year is my catharsis, bro. Oh, um, but like well, I'm, you're, you're, I'm still getting royalty checks, but I'm not like a rapper, dude. Like royalty check. Yeah, dude. You you make an album, you get royalty oh, yeah, checks. Much, I have I, an album. You say you own in one of your songs. You say you own some of the, the New York Times. Or, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a shareholder of the New York Times. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. That's dope. What, um, That's why I love Trump. You know. You, you want to talk? Did you see it? last week? We I made a shitload of money. The New York Times doesn't love Trump. Okay. I know you're you're an influential member in the Black Jewish community too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so before I came to before I came to Morehouse, that, yeah, that goes back to you before Morehouse, since you're not a right. Guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, before I came to Morehouse, um, I was a blue collar worker. Um, I went to community college uh, for two years. Graduated from Bunker Hill Community College. If you ever seen the movie, um, what's it? Uh, Drumline. No, <laughs> hell, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Nick Cave over here. The freaking dude was writing on the board. I, I was freaking. Oh, 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 oh uh, um, with Robin Williams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, last, like, Dead Poets, something like that. No, no Poet. not Dead Poets Society. I'm talking about Robert Williams film where he was with uh, Ben Affleck. Oh, uh, uh, Good Will Hunting. Good, Good Will Hunting. Yeah, so uh, where Good Will Hunting was shot. Good Will Hunting. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was shot there. I was president of, I was the president of the Republican Ward of my district of Boston where I live. And, um, I wasn't a member of the Republican Party. I was a third party candidate, um, a citizen, not candidate, um, citizen. And I, I had to come back to the Republican Party. Um, Why'd you have to come back? Well, because to take up the position as president of the award, that was one of the requirements for it to go to convention. You had to be a, a registered Republican. So I came back to the Republican Party because of that. And there was no leadership in my district for over two decades. So uh, at that time, I uh, worked. I worked at all of the graduations in Massachusetts, about forty different colleges in the Boston area, and I was working at Harvard in Harvard Business School and around the area. And what what I was doing is for graduation, we would just lay down the chairs and all the tables. So all the tables that the parents and everybody sat at, and we just laid that down at all the schools in Boston. And um, during that, I always hung out at Harvard all the time. So do, so I would uh, go to these. Uh, yeah, I would go to the. Um, the Halil over at Harvard, which is like the Jewish house. And um, I would go to events there. And one event I went to was the 100th anniversary of the Belfort Agreement, which took place in 1918, which actually was the legislation that Britain passed to create Israel. Mm. And um, at this event, Susanna Herschel was there, who was good friends with Bill Clinton, and her father was one of the most- um, Is this what you got the Bill Clinton picture? I don't have a picture of, I have a picture with Biden. I don't have a picture oh, with Clinton. No, um, but- Oh, wait, yeah, my phone. Uh, Okay, uh, the, me and Susanna was talking and then all of the Jewish study scholars in America were in the room at that time. And that's how I got involved with Zionism and a lot of the stuff I do now. I run an organization here at Morehouse um, called Tigers for Israel, which is the first pro-Israeli um, organization on the HBCU campus in the 100, I think 187 year, 188 year history of HBCUs. What about APAC? Um, APAC is not, sponsored by the college. 
Um, our our organization is approved by Morehouse College. Okay. Uh, so we we really uh, I do a lot of work with the, the WZO, which is the World Zionist Organization that um, actually created the whole nation state of Israel. So we uh, we get Morehouse students involved with activities within the Atlanta Jewish community to try to foster that relationship that was started with the Civil Rights Movement, Dr. King. Uh, with this, we actually did the first Shabbat in Morehouse history last year. So that's basically what I do on campus. Uh, that's my RSO, and uh, it's a little bit about my work. I'm, the fr I'm also the first black delegate in history for uh, the World Zionist Congress, which takes place this October. Wow. So you guys have until about March 14th to vote if you're Jewish. Only Jews can vote. Um, but if you have Jewish friends, let them know that um, to vote for the ZOA on Slate 11. For so look, um, I appreciate that, Pete. Yeah. Every episode on Explicit Content, I'm really good. Yeah. yeah. Like put, so we talked about it before. Every episode yeah. on Explicit Content, we pull out from the Chuck D book, um, History of Hip Hop. So, okay. uh, five years ago, 2015, Chris Brown and Tiger released their uh, studio album, Fan of Fan of a Fan. Wow. It was a album uh, released for RCA. I remember that was five years ago. Okay. So what do you what do you think about Tiger and Chris Brown? Or how, um, how are they relevant today? Today is about industry. I don't think Tiger's relevant at all. Um, I really don't like. I don't like how he he gives us great shit and then he leaves us like hanging for two years and then like we're supposed to ask. But that's because he's no, that bag. I don't really care about the bag. I care about the legacy, yeah. right? So like, it's just like you leave every year, though, but you don't leave every two. Years. I'm not a rapper. I've said it like three times. And now I'm repeating myself. You know, mentioned in the book. Yeah, and I'm not in the book, right? This is Chuck D's book, like the Godfather of rap, right? So, um, and shout out to Public Enemy who just received their uh, Grammy um, of uh, artist of 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 history, a uh, Hall of Fame last year. So um, shout out to them. But uh, New York again. Uh, but oh, I see. it's just like Tiger just leaves us hanging. He gives us great shit, drops a great mixtape, drops a great album. Then two years he leaves us hanging. Then he comes back and it's just like, all right, who are you dating now? Then we post up press about who he's dating. And then like he, he leaves, he's like, he's like the, he's like a better refined, younger, cooler version of Joel Santana. And it's just like, nah, Chris Brown, on the other hand, is a great artist, one of the greatest of all time. You know, he took like nine bullets to the chest, well, should took nine bullets for him to the chest. But I mean, in Hollywood, you know, to survive that, it's just amazing. Like, and you know, he's gone through, I've seen him since before he even came out, you know, in Virginia and like totally watched all of Chris Brown. Love, love where he's come from. They tried to destroy him with the Rihanna thing. He still bounced back. You know, he was supposed to be dead there, you know, so uh, I, I like, I like Chris Brown. You know, I like him a lot, and I think he's one of the best dancers in the world. Not the best, but he's definitely top ten. Yeah, um, you know, I think Chris Brown has a um, a very interesting legacy. Um, he has certain conflicts, um, but I think I think what person doesn't have their conflicts, you know? And I, and I enjoy his music. I'm not a big Chris Brown fan, though. Are you serious? Um, yeah, I'm not. You uh, haven't liked any of the albums? Yeah, I mean, I love this. Okay, so, so I know you got a favorite Chris Brown. I got, I got a, everybody got a favorite Chris Everybody, yeah. You know, if you in the culture, you got to have a favorite Chris Brown song. I think mine would be popping. I think, I think actually it's fine China. I mean, it's too new. I know. Too but, uh, and then Tyga, you know, I love, I love Soldier Boy talking about Tyga. I think that's fun. I don't know much about Tyga. Um, I, I mean, like that's, that's Mr. Rack City. Yeah, so hey, yeah. Well, that was. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really a Tiger guy. My, I, not really. I mean, I he's from New York. He's from the West Coast. It's, it's too yeah, different. Yeah, it's too not. Different. I mean, and then you know, CB's great. It's just I never, never got into that. All right, so look, before we get out of here, I'm gonna ask y'all this little question. Okay. Right? Uh, no need for you know, we don't got to talk about it. It's gonna be quick questions. Okay. You know. Okay. Cool. Let's take your All right. So have we done good? Are we doing yeah, good? Nah, yeah. Okay. All right. I so think we're doing good. This is a great episode. Okay. I, I, I enjoy both. I'm glad yeah. I, I got both here okay. together. All right. All right. I like the sympathy, but you know, I love the body language. <laughs> What's up? I love this guy. <laughs> Yankees. I love this answer. Uh, light skin, dark skin. Light skin. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, no. 
Everybody, Lights, right? everybody, everybody, everybody's cool. Everybody's cool. <laughs> All right, we got flats and drums. What's that again? Flats and drums. Drums. I don't eat meat. I'm a vegan. J. Cole Kendrick. Kendrick. Oh, Kendrick. Kendrick. Without a doubt. Kendrick. The baby or the baby? Or the baby or baby? Little baby. Little baby. Oh, baby. baby. Little baby. baby, man. Little baby. The baby. You hear that freestyle? XXL? All right, last one. Or oh, we got two more. That was a good freestyle. Jay or Kanye? Oh, Jay. Jay. Without Jay. a doubt. Group. Reasonable doubt? Reasonable what? doubt? Right. We kind of agreed on most of it. Yeah, though. reasonable doubt. All right, right so uh, last one, Biggie or Pac? Pac. Uh, Pac. But Biggie was a better lyricist. Let's Pac, just get that yeah, straight. Yeah, Biggie was a better lyricist. I like Biggie more. But so I, 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 I paid more. I, I, I bought, I purchased more Pac, Pac albums. Pac. So. Pac is just legendary. Pac didn't have the flow Pac like Biggie, but Pac, that was a mess. Yeah, it's all still with you, man. But all right, man. That's it. We're going to wrap this up. It's episode of Okay. We broke in. Appreciate you. I didn't break in. I was invited. Thank you, man. All right. Cool. Cool, bro. All right. Ah. Uh.